Hey guys, Drowcore here, back with the advanced coring video. Uh, I promise, sorry, it's been a long time since my first coring video, but some technical difficulties. Uh, I lost a video, and then I had to restock on trans potions and gold, and still do all the events and such, so I could um, keep advancing. But um, also working on uh, editing and filming and, and making this smoother, so. Uh, like and subscribe at the bottom and uh, I'll keep bringing more as I get better. Uh, today I'm going to go over briefly my strategy and using the new core dust feature um, and then I'm going to dive in and talk through my process when using trans potions um, and how to use them effectively and how to best narrow down your cores for specific trainers. Um, I'm going to try and keep this briefer than my last one um, and um, but I really want to uh, really wanted to show the necessity on the last one of how many cores it takes to really get one UR core. So um, I didn't quantify it though, so I've had a few questions about that. It's 625 green cores for one UR core. Uh, so don't forget to keep grinding Planet League and pushing up and getting those boxes. Um, so as far as dust goes, um, I really don't use it too much. Um, you access it here through the scrap so option. I really don't use it too much until I get my cores up into the red SSR section um, because then I can pull them out. But typically the green and the blue, they kind of level up together and you don't end up with a lot of extra. But if there's a core I want, a pentagon one for example like this one, that I want to get up and I only have three feeder ones, having one of dust from another bad one in another section makes it usable. Another thing too is um, where all the cores have to go. Um, when you're looking at your trainers, UR trainers need two pentagon, two diamond, and one triangle core. Uh, so you're gonna need a lot more diamond and pentagon cores than you do triangle. Um, but as you're leveling up, SSR trainers each need at level 50 two triangles and then one each of the diamond and pentagon so you'll need more triangles coming up so that does uh tend to show that as you move into late game you may want to dust some of your triangle cores to move them over and advance them uh some of the diamond and pentagon ones. Uh, I'm nowhere near there yet, probably most of you aren't either, but uh, future things could uh, lead that way. Um, now I'm gonna focus on um, trainer I just recently maxed uh, last week series here. Um, so she doesn't have any cores yet. Um, so that's what I'm gonna focus on for this video. Just go in and see if we can fill this out a bit. Um, so when looking to find one to make a match. Uh, most of the ones you have matched are probably already sitting on a trainer that you use a lot. Um, so when you get a new trainer or if you're trying to move cores around, um, there's always a chance that you may want to maximize just one deck and put the, no matter what the best cores all in one deck just to get your best ever trainer in one position. Um, it, it costs a lot of gold and you're never gonna maximize the possibility of your cores without being able to super boost them. So my goal is to get every core I have on a trainer into a super boostable position, uh, matching the stat and the position. Um, in order to do that, it's very random that you would just get it naturally. So these red trans potions um, come into play uh, in order to uh, specialize a core for a specific trainer. What I typically do is look to see which cores I have that already match my trainer's position. Because when re-rolling, if you re-roll your position, you have a 1 in 11 shot of hitting your position. And it could land right back on the position you rolled it out of. So it's a full 1 in 11. Whereas if you already have a matching position and you want to change the stat type, it's only a 1 in 6. So it's a much better shot of getting that narrowed in. I do have a couple of eye relief pitcher cores that are already locked in on Ditto. I could easily swap them back and forth. I don't need another triangle one, um, so that one's good. Only have one diamond one here, uh, and they 
uh, series needs a second one. Ditto's good with one. And then the Pentagon, again, I only have one. So on the diamond one here, um, looking at this one here, um, the way that this interface works in order really to manage the cores good, you want to do it through here so you can see the recommended trainers on each core. Um, but this way here is a much nicer way to see what you're filling out on a trainer. So hopefully they can fix this uh, in the future for us. But for now, uh, what you have to do is uh, find the one you want um, and then um, know what you're looking for. So as far as a G point relief pitcher, uh, there's only really two uh, in the game um, that I have and I don't use them that much. So this one's not really one I need to hold on to too badly. So I'm going to see if I can fit this in here. So here we go. Um, the gold trans potion and the red trans potion, um, typically speaking, as far as value goes, in the coin shops, um, the reds are only 10,000, uh, the golds are 30,000, and once a month versus once a week. I would much rather have three red trans potions at once a week for 10,000 than one gold. Um, it's rare that you're going to want to use a gold. They come in handy and it's nice to get from events and such, um, like the new event, but um, red's usually what you're going to use. So I'm going to go in here and try and switch this. Um, well, let's do the gold one first. Let's just use it. I've got it. The main stat's really low and I'm going to go for uh, intelligence here. So let's see what we do. Main stat improved, got a dexterity. I only have a one star Valentine, but I am also using this guy right here. So I might just leave that one where it is since it had a good roll on the starting pitcher. Um, sometimes that's gonna happen. You're gonna go and looking for one thing and, and it's gonna change course on you. So I'm gonna go down here and look at Penelope. Right now in a deck, that I'm about to use. Uh, so I'll level her up before I use it, but I am going to need that core right there on her. So I'm just going to lock that in. And I'm going to go right back to series here and see if we can uh, find another route. So I don't have any more. Um, I have this diamond relief pitcher here, um, which I do have an Eve, so I'm gonna leave this one alone. Um, so if you don't have position ones that match, let's see which intelligence ones I have that match that aren't being used. I don't really have any. So where do you go from there if you really wanna focus in on one trainer? Um, you come back here, um, and I like to go through the core screen um, to really sort um, and narrow things down. Um, also, I use a spreadsheet um, on my computer when trying to maximize my core usage for a specific deck. I can find that way a uh, much more optimal uh, match. So I've got this one here and I don't really have, uh, excuse me, I don't really have many diamonds. This is my shortest in supply. Um, followed by pentagon and then triangle. So like I was talking about, as you move into more UR trainers, you need triangle cores a lot less often. I'm gonna go back here really quick. Okay, so I'm coming back here to show you the deck I'm actually focusing on. This is really the deck that I'm trying to improve. Uh, so right now I don't have uh, hardly any cores on these guys and some have some that can switch around um, but most of my pitching as most of us have had have been uh, in strength and some mentality so these are uh, a switch for me that I'm gonna have to make um, to lock this back in so I can either go IFP or IRP or Dexterity IP. He's already got some in which I'll use to move over here, but I'll need an extra diamond and a pentagon. The lead is pretty empty um, and Psyker School, but these ones don't really match up. So um, if I don't have anything else that matches series, um, I'm going to jump over and see if we can get some of these in for Psyker.
All right, so Psyker's got uh, this one here, which has a one level super boost, pretty good core overall. Uh, and then this one here, I've got a uh, skill point first base. Um, there's nothing fun there. Um, so this is an easy reroll, but that's on position. So, um, and then as far as I'm talking about, um, if you go in this way and you're looking for, um, what matches a core, so you have a skill point for space. No, I have none. No recommended training. Here are Britra, of course, and also there's a backup. Here are Khan and Guy E. And here, um, <clears throat> base devil um, is pretty good for space trainer. So if you have something like this, a skill point for space, and there's no match, this is an easy decision that you roll because it's never going to be super boostable and uh, they come out with a position like that, which is no guarantee. And at this rate, the way they come out with them, it might take a while. So here on this one in particular, uh, this is a perfect one for me to roll off of first base. The intelligence um, skill point bonus is good enough to hold, so let's see if I can get lucky 1 in 11 roll on this position and land on closing pitcher. Oh, first chance. Look at that. That was amazing. Now, the strength roll is not very good. It's only a 16, but this allows me to lock this one in. Permanent Psyker Core that can be super boosted. It makes up for the lacking in that strength roll um, on that position roll. Uh, what else do I have here? Let's see if I get some more luck. This one, um, man, outside of that <clears throat> main stat, this core is really, 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 really good. Um, it is a triangle core, so it's doesn't have a lot of value unless I have a matching uh, position and trainer that works for it. Um, but the only dexterity closing pitchers that I have are both SR, um, which really aren't going to get used, um, except for in special circumstances. Um, and the only UR trainer I don't have closing pitcher is... Violet on a G point. So again, unless they come out with something that works for that, um, I'm never going to be able to super boost it. However, um, some of these um, are still so good, like this one, that it's almost worth, if I get a good roll on the main stat here, if this gets close to 100, this thing's usable for any decks or closing pitcher without super boosting for a long, long time. So that's that, 97 out of 100. Wow, this is a, this is a fun video to make. I'm scoring on everything here. So this one I'm gonna leave. Um, it's, it's pretty good uh, all around core now. Uh, Affinity and max on the third and the fourth sub stats is pretty incredible. Um, so next here we have a um, skill point starting pitcher core. Um, again, um, the position is what needs to be re-rolled, but um, let's see how lucky we get. Can we do it again? First re-roll. Ooh, right field. No, it's not what I was looking for, but um, I do have... Um, I do have a trainer in that position, so I want to make sure that I'm not going to leave Cliffina out. She does need the core like that, um, and she doesn't necessarily need this one. So we might go ahead and just trade Swampy Swap here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to remove this one off of her. Remove this one off of Psyker. I'll put this one on her. And then this one I will try and make for Psyker. Huh? Go back in this way. So now I got another position roll to make. Um,
see how we do. Oof. I'm not going to keep that one. We're going to try that one again. First base. Now, there's again, as I've covered, there's no skill point first base trainer. Um, so, definitely rerolling that. Oh, I need some gold. Hold on, let me go back here and uh, get some gold here really quick. Okay, restocked on gold. Uh, at least enough here to finish this one last lucky shot core. Um, go back in here. Here's that skill point first base. Got two more shots at this one, so aiming for closing pitcher, but takes any other good roll. Oh, I got another hit on right field, much worse than the last one. Uh, so we're gonna give that another shot. As you can see here, uh, you, you can um, waste a lot of transmission trying to reroll the position. Now that was amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one on Luna, not just because I'm out of red trans potions. I do have a Luna, and uh, that was a massive hit on a max substat roll. So uh, all in all, um, pretty effective uh, work here. Was able to uh, lock in uh, two cores here. Um, this one here, although it didn't become super boostable. Um, locked in as a really solid high point value core, uh, almost maxed. Um, we're one point off on the first substat, max the bottom three substats, and only three points off max on the main substat. Um, this is only four points off of max uh, point value. It's really good. And this one uh, moved into super boostable uh, position. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pop that for now. Um, this, this is going to add a lot of value uh, to all my runs right now. So um, that was my advanced guide on coring and how to uh, narrow down position trainers, how to use your trans potions. Uh, next one I cover will be as I advance more into having more UR cores and we'll cover some use of gold trans potions, red trans potions, and... I talk about turning some cores into dust, uh, gold UR cores that is into dust and when that makes sense and when it's the right decision. Uh, thanks for joining me guys. Again, um, like and subscribe uh, for more content. And I'll keep